dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Proudly we hail, starring Esther Williams in Avalanche, United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And here is your host, our Theater of Stars producer, C.T. T. McGregor. Thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Proudly We Hail, which today proudly inaugurates the first of its new half-hour dramatic program. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the premier performance of our new series. And surely no more lovely star ever graced the premiere than our own beautiful and talented actress, Esther Williams. You'll hear Esther as Victoria Chambers in Avalanche, the exciting story of Manhattan's most glamorous businesswoman who went high up in the mountains for a rest and vacation but found the snow too hot to handle. Our story in a moment, but first, Wendell Niles. You know, calling an army an instrument of peace may sound odd, but that's exactly what your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force are. They're protecting the peace for all of us and for the people of the world. That's why your Army and Air Force must be scientifically trained and staffed with competent, intelligent young men. And today, thousands of young men are contributing to the maintenance of world peace as members of the regular Army and U.S. Air Force. Now, once again, our producer. And now... Act one of Avalanche, starring Miss Esther Williams as Victoria Chambers. <laughs> Victoria Chambers was very lovely in the papers and newsreels. But then, why shouldn't she? For the eccentric Miss Chambers had been called one of the ten most beautiful women in America. And she lent considerable grace and glamour to the publishing office of Arthur White that she held down a desk as an associate. But on the afternoon our story begins, Victoria was not quite her usual charming self. I most certainly wasn't. I had mushed my way through ten pages of the wordiest prose imaginable. A love story. Set in an unreal scenic background described in every color of the spectrum. No feeling, no emotion, just words. I pressed a buzzer for my secretary, Mabel. What's the matter, Miss Chambers? Oh, you look like you went in one end of the ringer and haven't yet emerged from the other. Mabel, you approximate my feelings very closely. What's wrong? Oh, this manuscript, this would-be novel, massive pages. Who's the author of this gem? I'll look it up. No, oh, never mind. Uh, Voyage to Kimberley. The title sounds exciting. Mabel, this is about as exciting as last week's newspaper. Why in the world does Arthur White do this to me? Why does he insist on publishing the first novel of every unsung author in America? Maybe it's Mr. White's humanitarian instinct. Humanitarian? Why doesn't he think of me? I'm a physical wreck. Well, anyway, Mabel, return the manuscript. Yes, Miss Chambers. Is that all? That's all. Miss Chambers, I hate to mention it, but things just aren't the same anymore. Why? What do you mean? What well, you used to say, so nice. That is all, Mabel. Oh, I'm sorry. I think your work is getting you down. You know, I think you have something there. Too many responsibilities. That is you mean. Honestly, Miss Chambers, you alarm me. You know, Mabel, I believe you're right. This is changing me. I've been a slave to this desk and this office too long. You know, I'm going to do something about it. Oh, well, now, don't do something rash. Mabel, call me the minute Mr. White returns, will you? Good afternoon, Vicky. Oh, good afternoon, Arthur. Mabel said you were looking for me. Uh, where in the world did you get that scarf? And what's the matter with this scarf, Arthur? Well, the color it just doesn't go with your suit. That's what's the matter with it. You know, you can carry your eccentricity only so far, Vicky. This is a perfectly good scarf, and don't you try to sidetrack me. Well, what do you mean? Arthur, I'm all fed up. I'm disillusioned, I'm tired, and I'm very disgusted. Oh, no, just a minute, Vicky. And this last little opus you laid on my desk, Voyage to Kimberley, this is really the payoff. Romance and technicolor. 
She describes nothing in one word when eight won't do. Well, hey, you, you don't have to throw it at me. I thought the title looked exciting. It's the epitome of dullness. The very last straw, and I've made up my mind. I'm leaving you, Arthur. Oh, now, Vicky, you can't mean that. Well, I do. I'm taking off from this desk in this office today. But, Vicky, you can't do this to me. Well, you're the cornerstone of the firm. You're the strength of this entire business. You can't just walk out and see this, this, this blossoming flower. Arthur, and Arthur, get up off your hands and knees and quit hamming it up all over the place. I only want a week to rest up. Eh? Oh, well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you ought to know better than that. How could I exist without this job? Oh, yes, of course. You had me worried, you know. Sometimes you do crazy things, Vicky. Like the clothes you buy. I like them. No, 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 no. Don't get excited. <laughs> uh, where are you going? Uh, I, I think that new resort. The Mount St. Charles Inn. Lots of snow and steam. Mount St. Charles. Well, that's the place where they have all the avalanches. But I didn't know you liked snow. I said I was practically raised on a ski show. Well, what do you say? Do I get the week? <laughs> what do you ask? What can I say? Believe me, Arthur, I wouldn't leave if there was something important here. I know, I know. And of course you can go. Take a week and have a good time. Ah, oh, you'll see, Arthur. But I, I think I'll need a couple more days. Well, what for? Well, to get ready. Make reservations, buy clothes. Oh, and... you... Goodbye, Arthur. Thank you, Paris. If you, uh, if you get a snowball from the inn at Mount St. Charles, you'll know who sent it. Oh, going somewhere in the chamber? Yes, Mabel, I, I'm getting away for a week. Is everything under control? Well, I can't think of a thing, Miss Chambers. I'm just addressing the envelope on that rejection you gave me today. Boy, it's the Kimberly. Oh, that's bad. That's good. Well, I'll see you in a week then, huh? Goodbye, Miss Chambers. Mr. Philip Dunn. Manager, Mount St. Charles, the end. Poor guy. He's a good parcel, too. I scoured the town for clothes to wear in the snow for the next couple of days and then grabbed the train from Mount St. Charles. Oh, it was a beautiful day when I arrived at that tiny station. There were there were six inches of snow on the ground with the weather crisp and clear. And there was someone to meet me at the station. Oh, he was quite handsome. How do you do? Uh, you're Victoria Chambers, aren't you? Oh, yes, I am. Uh, I'm Philip Dunn, owner of the Mount St. Charles. Uh, you may remember me. Well, I'm afraid I don't. Well, uh, I've done some writing. As a matter of fact... Oh, I... please, Mr. Dunn. I came up here just to get away from all that. Oh, yes, of course. The car is right over here. It's awfully kind of you to meet me. Pleasure, Miss Chambers. Here. Let me have your back. Thank you. Well, this is it, if you can call it a car. Oh, well, I think it's charming. <laughs> Not so fast. This car would make Jack Benny's Maxwell look like a limousine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, it runs. Well, it needs a paint job, too. Oh, it's so nice to be up here. Oh, I've been much too busy. I, uh... I imagine you read a lot of manuscripts. I certainly do. And what manuscripts? The, the other day we received a thing called Voyage to Kimberley. Um, a thing? Mm -hmm. And believe me, that's being nice to us. Of course, I, I only read the first ten pages. Oh. Does that give the author a, a fair pitch? Oh, but this had nothing. No feeling, no emotion, absolutely no sincerity. But it opened with a love scene. What a love scene. It shouldn't happen to a clam. Oh? Perhaps it should. The author wrote it with the emotion of one. <clears throat> uh, um, Mr. Dunn, aren't you driving fast for this road? I hardly think so. Well, I guess you don't. Oh, it's a lovely day, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. step off of one while you're up here. They're pretty high. <laughs> they are? Oh, no. They're the skating rink. Oh, yes. And we also skate at night under those red and green colored lanterns. I don't know why we do, though. Why? What do you mean? Well, sometimes the lanterns fall on people's heads. Oh, you're joking, of course. Uh, oh, who's the young fellow down there skating with all the girls around him? 
Well, that's my brother, Johnny. He's the reason I built this place up here. Yes? Mm-hmm. I brought him up here two years ago in a wheelchair. Oh, I'd never believe you. Oh, and so many girls. Oh, does, uh, does that run in the family? Who knows? What was that? Oh, oh, that, that's a slide. We have them up here occasionally when the snow gets heavy. Well, this could be a very dangerous place. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Until a few minutes ago. It doesn't seem to bother you much. Oh, nothing ever stops me. I'm a planner. Uh, which gives me an excellent idea. How about a tea this afternoon? I'd love it. We went skiing that afternoon. I began to realize that Mark St. Charles was really the change I needed. Oh, and what a change. <laughs> was that busy feeling the altitude? Never affected me that way before. We came down Hill George home, almost too quickly it seemed. Then on to the only flat piece of ground within miles of the hotel. It was a huge cliff which overlooked the level ground. We paused for a moment. Well, there's old Boney. The cliff? Mm-hmm. After dark, when you get on this piece of flat ground and see that purple silhouette, you realize you're almost home. Oh, that's a welcome home sound, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Strange, I, I've never had that feeling before. Oh, it's been grand, baby. Has it been? Wonderful. I'm sorry it's over so quickly. Are you really? I am, really. Well, there'll be other days. Only a week, you know. Well, that's a week. Lots of things can happen in a week. Young man, you seem very confident. Young lady, I was never more confident in my life. But say, look, they'll, they'll be skating tonight. The red and green lanterns are very lovely. How about it? It's a date. We went skating together that night, and it was glorious. By this time, I, I knew that busy feeling couldn't be the altitude. Well, the days went by. I watched each one go, surrendering up each hour reluctantly. Had a wire from Arthur White, urging me to be back at the end of the week. Oh, that last night came much too soon. It was snowing outside, but as we sat before the fire, we didn't mind at all. I do. So warm. Mm-hmm. I like the fire. It has been awful nice spending so much time with me. Well, I've enjoyed it. You have no idea how I've enjoyed it. Oh, Phil, I, I can't believe that my week is up. It's been a good week. It's been a wonderful week. And successful. A successful in ending. That's what you mean. Oh, no. No, not that. You see, I've been trying to prove something to you all week. You have? Yes. What's that? This is it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that convincing? No, what? Does that have feelings? Emotion? Sincerity? What in the world are you talking about? Should it happen to a clam? Should it? You won't. That's right. Oh, it's the timber. Yes, that, uh, that thing. That thing, thing you've just been telling me down. What are you thinking? And everything you said. Oh, Phil, Phil, how could you? How could you? I rushed to my room of all the miserable, sweet, deceitful tricks. Swindled. That's what it was. I've been swindled. I was scarcely in my room when it t- Hello? Mr. Troy, can Yes? One moment, please. George is calling. Go ahead. Hello, Vicky. Arthur White. Yes, Arthur. Oh, how are you, Vicky? I'll get it. No, it's just Jackie. Ah, that's good. Vicky, you must have been in the big heat. Because you opened up some great respect we had in you. What? Oh, you should have been believed. I read it for friends when it is great. Now, get this. The author is there at Mount St. Charles. No, Arthur, you're telling me. I want you to get that book. Frame up. Why aren't you when you do? <laughs> Don't get caught in one of those avalanches. I'm sorry, Arthur. The avalanche has already fallen. We 
pause briefly from our story, Avalanche, starring Esther Williams, to bring you an important message. At some time of his life, every man has dreamed of a career in aviation. But right now, opportunities in the United States Air Force are wide open for ambitious young men. You have the chance to qualify for any number of phases of aviation, from actually flying the new Air Force planes to administration of Air Force units. You can learn radio and radar, airplane maintenance, photography, weather observation, and many other fields. Or you can apply for aviation cadet training or Air Force officer candidate school. Yes, the doors are wide open for keen, far-seen young men. And don't forget, an Air Force career pays better than average right from the day you enlist. So why don't you men with an eye to the future find out now what the U.S. Air Force has to offer you? Talk it over with your local recruiting officer. And do it right away, won't you? And now, Act Two of Avalanche, starring Esther Williams and Victoria Chambers, associate in the publishing firm of Arthur White Incorporated, also associated with a king-sized doghouse. Up at the Mount St. Charles Inn, Victoria's personal dilemma is doubled by the knowledge that she must get Philip Dunn's unpublished book for her boss, Arthur White. She finally confronts Philip in his office at the end. He's at the phone. Oh, won't they ever answer? Oh, Vicky, there you are. Phil, I'd like to talk to you. Not now. Phil, I must. I had a call from Arthur White. You know, he owns the firm I work for. How interesting. Oh, I hope the lines aren't down. But Phil, will you please listen to me? I admit I was wrong, completely wrong about your book. Now, Mr. White wants to publish it. What? He wants to what? Publish your book. What? Well, oh, we'll talk about that later. Phil. Sure. Listen, have you looked outside today? Yes. Can you see it snowing? Certainly. Do you know that we're practically snowed in up here? No, Phil. And that people have to eat to live? Oh, Phil, what can I do to help? You can get out of my hand. Oh, oh wait a minute. Get on this phone and keep ringing it. When you get an answer, call me. Well, what's happened? Nothing so far. Oh, this can be very serious. The food truck was a day late this week. We're low on supplies. And in this country, I've seen these storms last two weeks. Oh, Phil. Yeah, it's only the half of it. I sent my brother Johnny and another man down the road in the truck this morning. I'm worried about them. I've never seen it snow like this. Phil. What is it, Fred? Phil. They're back. Who? The boys in the truck. We got a half mile down the road. Get it over. Johnny's hurt. Pretty bad. I'll be right there. Vicky. Yeah? Come on, now do your stuff. We've got to get help up here. Hello? 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 This is the inn at Mount St. Charles. Hold on there, please, will you? Hold on. Phil? Phil? You got somebody? Yes. Good work. Hello? Hello, Phil. This is Greg. I'm coming. Oh, thanks having the phone lines aren't down there. She's telling me. Mac, you've got to get us some help. I'll do anything I can. I'll get a snowplane, though, Bill. I'm not talking about snowplows. I want an airplane up here. Food? Yeah, but that's not all. The plane will have to come in. It's impossible to land a plane up there, Bill. Why not drop the supplies? Look, I'm not worried about the supplies, Mac. It's my brother, Johnny. He's had an accident. He's badly injured, and we've got to get him to a hospital. All right, got you, Bill. Now, look, get a, get a plane. One of those grasshoppers. He can land here in the flat clearing below Old Bono. Yeah, you know. If he puts on skis, he'll be all right. But warn him that that's the only place he'll make it. Uh, we'll mark the area with green lanterns from the rink here. Do it now, Mac. I've got to get Johnny to a hospital. Okay, Phil. Get any sort of a break in the weather, we'll get a plane up. In the meantime, the snow will be working nice and gently to try to get through. Hello? 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 Johnny grew worse. He became quite delirious. Phil was doing everything he could for him. On the evening of his third day, the storm seemed to fade. Stop snowing just as the sun went in. And at that moment, I heard a groan sound. I ran up to the room where Phil was calling for his brother. Phil? Yes? The plane is missing. Oh, that's it. We'll make it yet. Now, listen, Vicky. Yes? I can't leave Johnny. No. I want you to go down to the shed by the lake. Get the green lanterns out. But, but, yeah. Now, quickly, go get them, light them, and mark the field. And you'll have to hurry. I hurried out of the shed and crossed my fingers. It was as cold and dark, but I knew safely. I hear the plane, searching for the clearing. Get out the lanterns and make 
made my way back to the hotel. Suddenly, there was a rumbling. Not a big sound, but an ominous sound. I turned in the direction of a sound. It was an avalanche. I could barely see the cliff outline of old Boney as it crashed into the flat place below. Are you all right, Vicky? I'm all right, sir. It's a cliff. It's fallen directly on the flat below. Yeah, here comes the train. They're coming into land. Oh, there's nothing we can do now. Nothing. Before the plane come in, a mission of mercy, not knowing the disaster that awaited in that field, was what it was. It was a motor car. You could almost see the shadow of the wind that out in the ground. And then... Suddenly, a mill. The plane blew it off and disappeared. At almost that same moment, we heard another sound, and then we saw headlines. We've made it, Vicky. We've made it. The plane isn't coming in. And listen to that. It was no cloud. It had made it. And standing on the running boat waiting for us was Arthur White. Of course, he wanted to be on any victory, too. Of course he wanted to know about Bill's book. Well, he settled that later. First, we got down to the hospital in town and under the care we needed. Then we all had some dirty hot feet. And then Phil and I had a moment in front of that same fireplace. By uh, this time, she had nothing to have a walk Well, this has been an exciting few days. <laughs> I think it's so. Didn't expect all this when you came up here. Well, no, not quite all this. What about the first thing? Well, who would I be to deny the publication of my own soul's work? I'm sorry, Phil, but, but I didn't read it, too. I would have known. Oh, you were tired and a little overworked, I think. But I want to apologize for what I did. Particularly emotional, but no reason. Well, then I'll tell Arthur you can have the book. Of course. And, uh, you tell me my wife, your wife before me. Speaking of miracles, the most amazing thing to me is these hectic days just passed with this. Why did that airplane tear off? I can't wait to get the answer. Well, uh, you you don't have to be. Hmm? I'll, uh, I'll tell you. I accomplished that little miracle. You did? Mm-hmm. Well, in addition to all my other capabilities, you were, you know, picking out bestsellers. Oh, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Well, in addition to all my other accomplishments, I happen to be quite colorblind. Really? <laughs> You'll soon discover that by the clothes I wear. Oh, and, uh, darling, you know those lanterns? Well, I just, I just happened to put the red lanterns on the field instead of the green. Falls on the final act of Avalanche. Our star, Esther Williams, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. When a young man chooses a life work, he wants assurance. He wants assurance that he will like the work, that he'll be able to advance through his own efforts, that the pay is good, and the job has future security. It's only natural. Well, a regular army career has all these points. Yes, thousands of fine careers are open to top-notch young men in the army, and if you qualify, you'll be able to choose the type of training you wish, even before you sign the enlistment papers. That's a pretty good assurance right there. As a private, you'll be able to save up to $48 a month. In four months, you'll be eligible for promotion to private first class. And from there on, promotions depend on your desire to advance. So, men, if you want a worthwhile career with a future, the Army's the place for you. Enlist now at your local U.S. Army recruiting station. Now, here again is our star, Esther Williams, now producer. If there's only one star in Hollywood who has a copyright on loveliness, surely that person is our own lovely star, Esther Williams. Esther, you really swam through that one with the greatest of ease. <laughs> well, thank you, C.T. I really enjoyed it. You know, Esther, the talent seems to run in the family, in your case, doesn't it? I don't know what you mean, C.T. Why, your husband's engaged. In addition to his accomplishment as a radio announcer, he 
you've become such a fine singer. Well, thank you for both of us. <laughs> well, you, you know, there's only one thing wrong with Dan as a crooner. Well, I didn't know there was. What is it, Sandy? He's got muscles. <laughs> You know, you've got something there, Susie, because he's got muscles, all right. But you'll have to admit, he wears a mean bow tie, doesn't he? Oh, yes. I agree to that, all right. It's <laughs> a good thing you do, because I tie it for him. Stay by the pension for polka dots. No, but getting back to the show, Susie, I understand this is the first of the new Proudly We Hail Half Hour stage. That's right, Esther. Well, I consider it a real honor to have been chosen for your senior performer. And, and here's wishing you the best of luck on your new series. Oh, but now, C.P., before I get away, what time proud are you here for next week? Next week, our theater of stars presents a delightful comedy, The Victim of Circumstance. It's the story of a blessed event. It's a surprise ending which only Mr. Stork could have conjured. And our star in the role of Peter Donaldson will be that outstanding motion picture favorite, William Holden. Well, that's certainly a must on my list, C.P., and I'll be listening. Goodbye and thank you. Goodbye, Esther. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when proudly we hail your theater of stars will bring you the delightful comedy, Victim of Circumstance, starring William Holden. And now until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Williams appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearances of all stars on this program. Script was by Rick Hall. Special musical effects by Eddie Savannah. Don't forget next week on Proudly We Hail, William Holden in The Victim of Circumstance. Proudly We Hail, your theater of stars, is transcribed in Hollywood for convenient release at this hour. This is Wendell Niles speaking.